Martin Luther King was just 39 years old when he died. During his short life, he worked to end America's long history of injustice. How did he do it? Well, according to his niece, by following the rules. Alveda King has seen her share of tragedies, from the assassination of her uncle, Martin Luther King Jr., to the untimely death of her father. But she's also witnessed great triumph, such as the passing of the Civil Rights Act. Through all of life's trials and victories, Alveda and her family learned timeless truths that enabled them to bring about revolutionary change. In her new book, King Rules, Alveda shares those core values that guided the King family that will help you, your family, and our nation to prosper. Alveda King is here with us now, and we welcome you back to the Seven Hundred Club. Hello, Terry. It's so good to be here. It's a great treat to see you Thank again. Thank you. I, I want to talk a little bit about, well, your book is called King Rules, but uh, the the rules that Martin lived by really were not just his. They were from a long line of king rules. Talk about that. Absolutely. And you'll see in our family tree, seven generations. That family yeah. tree I looked at and went, oh my goodness, I've never seen a tree this big. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> well, it's at kingrulesbook.com. Nelson Books has uh, put uh, so many pictures there. And we wanted you to know that Martin Luther King Jr. was not born in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. He came from generations of godly people, yeah. uh, imperfect people who served a perfect God. Yes, yes. You talk about one of the first rules that you say is to make home a priority. And I thought, boy, as the world gets faster and faster and faster, you know, we sometimes get our priorities out of order, but that's a significant one, and it's been significant for your family. Talk about that. Well, the importance of home, I remember it from being a little girl, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember the birth home where Martin Luther King Jr. was born, my daddy, A.D. King, and Christine, their sister, and uh, there were so many rules at home, and I know that the audience would love to hear this. At home, Daddy, after Jesus was king, the father was the head of the household. And then there was Mama King and the children, and they obeyed <laughs> rules. Now, this is a real funny story, but it's true. Daddy King, they would hold dinner until he came home, if he was in town. And when he got there, everybody had to do a Bible verse. Wow. Now, the boys may be hungry because they were waiting for Daddy to get home, so they would say, Jesus wept. And then Daddy <laughs> King would say... <laughs> That isn't the Bible. It's the shortest verse. Why did he weep? And then it made dinner longer because they had to have a Bible lesson before dinner. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You also say one of the other rules that you have is work for peace. Not a surprise to people because I think that's Martin's legacy, really, is that we should all be working for peace. But talk a little bit about the things you share regarding that. Well, you'll notice in the book that there are scriptures to support all of those positions. And so we were looking for the peace that passes all understanding, yeah. the peace that Jesus leaves, the peace that causes men and women, no matter what their ethnic group is or <clears throat> economic status is, mm -hmm. to love each other. Yeah. And we believe, and it's, it's a king rule, if you love and regard your fellow human being, then there will be peace because you will respond even to wrongs with mm -hmm. love. Yeah. And that's really where you get peace. Yeah, the even to wrongs is huge, isn't it? It is so very huge. And in the 20th century, of course, we were still dealing with skin color and racism. Mm -hmm. And there are so many issues now for all people from conception until natural death. And people yeah. say, well, here she goes with pro-life. No, the baby in the womb, of course. Mm -hmm. But once the baby is born and becomes a teenager and an adult and then a mature person and an old person. Now, I'm 64 now. And I've always said, never mistreat old people. But yeah. now that I'm 64, it's getting more important, never isn't it? mistreat old people. <laughs> it's getting more important never. to me, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I want you to talk about life. The last time you and I were together, we were uh, at, at a local gathering here that was all about life. And, yes. and one of the rules is defend life. I yes. know that you are pro-life. Uh, you say that, you know, Dr. King was pro-life even though he once received an award from Planned Parenthood, but there was a strong belief there in the value of life. Well, Daddy King, my granddaddy, Martin A.D.'s and Christine's daddy, my mother wanted to have a, a procedure uh, to not have me in 1950. Abortion mm -hmm. was illegal, but you could just go to the doctor and say, my stomach hurts, and he could explore. Yeah. And then you'd come away with everything that was there, not there. And he says, Nene, you can't abort that baby. She's a little girl with bright skin and bright red hair. I saw her in a dream three years ago. 
prophetically, wow. no ultrasound. He Ooh. saw me three years before I was born. And then in the 70s, I thought about aborting another child, and I told Granddaddy. He says, no, that's my great-grandchild. That's not a lump of flesh, yeah. no. So life is important in our family, and, and so we defend all life, but really, not just the babies, mm -hmm. the hungry. And there's a book about the needy. You know, you defend and stand up for everybody. Yeah. What was it in your own life that changed things for you? You know, you went through struggles yourself and, and even coming up to a place where you considering a, were considering an abortion at a point of need in your life. Was it the family rules that finally brought you down the road to a tight relationship with God? It was the family rules that brought me back. The word of my grandfather. In 1983, I accepted Jesus as my Lord, not granddaddy's God, not daddy's God, but my mm -hmm. God, Jesus as my Savior. And in 1983, my life changed. And finally, I ended up as African American Director of African American Outreach with Priest for Life many years later. Wow. Wow. When you were writing this book, um, I'm sure, first of all, it brought back many memories, but I'm sure it also caused you to think a great deal about our culture today. What do you want people to take away from this? Well, I want to say it's so important that that's a Thomas Nelson book, the history mm -hmm. of how many Bibles Thomas Nelson got into the hands of people. That meant a lot that a Bible company would take the king rules, and there's a scripture, may the king's rule be as refreshing as the rain. It's in the beginning yeah. of the book. I'm not talking about the human king family, yeah. the king of kings and the Lord mm -hmm. of lords. And so to just know that no matter what we're doing in life, we all are imperfect without Christ. There are 10 rules that can help us to get back to God. Yeah. And you will enjoy reading about all of them because the rules matter and so do the stories surrounding them. If you'd like to know more about King Rules, read Alveda's book. This is available in stores nationwide. And Alveda, we thank you for being with us today and for the message you bring. Thank it's you so much. It's great to see you again. It's good to see you the too. Lord bless you.